So um, we're going to continue with the uh, memo here. And this, uh, I left off, I think, with uh, just the mono, monochromatic wash. And uh, last night I put in the water uh, and I used uh, a uh, ultramarine or uh, viridian viridian Viridian, cerulean, and white mixture. Uh, and then added a little bit of yellow in this upper left hand corner. I'll mix up the uh, this put it in this 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 is just the first pass of the color and uh, I always on these big areas I always uh, anticipate doing another pass you can see that the, the paint is uh, a little splotchy. Uh, I'm trying to work uh, fairly thin this pass. Uh, Brush here. Let's see what this looks like. Now this is Viridian, Cerulean, and uh, white. The Viridian is a uh, Michael Graham color, and the Cerulean is a blocks color. Uh, both fairly uh, pricey paints. Uh, but since it's a smallish area, um, I don't mind splurging. <laughs> so this this comes out a little bit brighter, and then as I uh, progress. to the uh, right, add a little more viridian. Makes a nice aqua color. And Then I'm going to add, uh, as I get further down, well, first I'm going to uh, add to the shoreline up here. 
lighter color. It's a shallower area. The water is shallower up here, so you get a little of the uh, get more of the uh, light reflecting off the sand. So it's going to be lighter. Maybe add uh, that was with a little yellow ochre and uh, let's try a little. Lemon, cat, cat lemon, uh, yellow. That might be too dark. Too dark. I'll switch. Uh, switch this so you can see. Just a little too yellow, at least according to the photograph. This is probably the uh, most dominant feature of, the, of this um, scene. Yeah. It's pretty stunning when you look down off the trail. See this uh, beautiful aqua color. Now, as I approach uh, the uh, the lower right, I'm going to uh, darken it up with uh, cobalt blue and cerulean. I like to have uh, this corner rather dark. Um, darker than the rest of the uh, water. It sort of keeps your eye in the painting a little more. So this is cerulean and uh, cobalt. I could probably add just a touch of the lizard too, just to uh, 
make them even darker. Just keep this corner nice and dark here. And then we'll go back to a little more cobalt. Still working pretty thin. Uh, I want to just not use thick paint at this stage, uh, especially in a big area like this. Uh, it's more than likely I'll make another pass at it. Uh, of course, this is a, a studio painting, so I have all the time in the world. Lights not changing. Different times of the day, this uh, seeing the, the colors would just dramatically change uh, according to the position of the sun. This is uh, Probably a, a morning shot. Um, I think afternoon shot. Because this is this is south. And Yeah, this is probably a afternoon shot. Um, I'm getting a little too dark up in here. Or Viridian. Their uh, reflections off the water uh, are going to be yellow, uh, maybe not as yellow as they are right now, but uh, they'll be catching the sunlight. direct sunlight and uh, have a yellow glint to them. Glint.
it's got a little too much white. You're never really going to get the uh, brilliance with uh, pain. <laughs> this is brilliant because the, the light is going through the, passing through the water and uh, reflecting up from the, the sandy bottom. So it's sort of a uh, transparent uh, color, very transparent. Whereas the reflections off the rocks is more reflective light. Uh, it bounces off the light. This is um, it's almost like going through a filter, stained glass. So, and it'd probably almost be easier to capture this in watercolor because watercolor works the same way. You're, you're working with uh, a transparent medium where you, you, the paper reflects the light and it picks up the color of the pigment as it reflects back towards you. It's, it's more of a transparent light where this is uh, where the oil is reflected. It's uh, solid objects absorb. The only color you see is is the color the the light rays that are being uh, reflected, bouncing off the object. Every everything else is all the other light rays. Uh, the reds in this case the reds are um, being absorbed by the uh, color or the object the surface of the object and you, the only thing you're seeing is what's uh, reflected back at you where it's transparent transparent colors you're seeing the light rays that are bouncing back through a, another surface off through off of another surface before it, uh, and it picks up the color of the pigment. Uh, when I was doing some illustration work, uh, I used either acrylic or gouache, uh, kind of avoided watercolor because it didn't re reproduce well. Uh, it was transparent and it did, just didn't photograph as well as a, a reflective pigment such as gouache or acrylic or oil. Oil was uh, a little too slow in drying, so I used um, a lot of gouache and uh, Acrylic inks, acrylic paints, and they 
they were a little more reliable to photograph, photograph with. So there's the uh, water in the cove, the emerald sort of aqua color, and a little bit of that is showing right back here. Stroke of that. A little dark. So I'm um, going to move up to the, the background after this. And uh, I'm putting in the lightest lights after I put in the darkest darks. And uh, put a few of these lengths of uh, light values, a uh, little thicker paint here. Now this, uh, there's a shadow, a cast shadow along the bottom of this land mass here, uh, which I'll uh, probably work on that. Uh, A little bit later. I think it's a little too intense in color. A little too saturated. Make it a little grayer. This is the the beach area here. That's it's not too cool to we'll, we'll mess with that later. Right now I I I want to get the uh, big statements in. So I'll move back to the uh, background. Let me change the higher set. I have a skylight right over the and uh, 
the uh, light will be changes. Especially when it's partly cloudy. It's from light to dark. So we'll work on uh, this area, which is the next latest area. Strong is Verdians. Very strong color. No, it's looking too dark. <laughs> Clouds coming over over the skylight. As the fog's rolling in. Now this um, land mass here is a pretty important. Uh, Part of the paint painting, even though it's uh, take up much uh, much space on the painting, um, but it's a mid tone, and it it has to be lighter than uh, any of the, most of these tones. Uh, the dark tones. And uh, it's probably on my uh, value scale, it's probably a, uh, I don't know, like a three, maybe a two. So we'll mix up uh, the tone for that, and it's going to be a cool gray. Bluish gray as Objects recede, they get the lights get lighter, or the lights get darker, and the darks get lighter, as opposed to up in the foreground where the darks are the darkest and the lights are the whitest. And also the uh, the color. Loses, loses intensity. Now this landmass back here is probably covered with trees and has cliffs in it. Um, so the, the values are going to be pretty much, or the colors are going to be pretty much gray. You're not going to see um, much green. Even though if you go back there, you can see green trees, but the atmosphere reduces the uh, intensity of the color. I've read, well, it makes sense. Yellow is a, the lightest color on your palette, color. Is uh, outside of white. And 
the yellow actually gets dissipates the further back it goes because it doesn't have the strength back here as it would up up in uh, up the front. So back here you're not going to have you're going to have blue instead of uh, blue gray instead of green because the, the yellow is uh, faded out. The yellow disappears. It's, it's, there's probably some in there, but uh, it becomes indistinguishable. Now, I, I will add, I'm, I'm starting off with a, a violet uh, mixture of cobalt and uh, alizarin and white. And let's see what this looks like. It looks, it looks light on the palette, but uh, Looks too dark back here. We'll try this. A lot of, a lot of guessing. <laughs> when you uh, cover up a a bare area on the canvas, a lot of guesswork, especially when there's nothing else around it to uh, to relate to. It's all relationships. Um, and this may be too dark. I, I just have a sneaky suspicion it's going to be too dark. But, um, this is this is uh, the edge of the canvas up here. Doesn't go any higher than that. It's a twelve by sixteen. And, uh, I'm going to lighten it up behind these trees a little. This is just cobalt blue and uh, viridian. Looks like I picked up a little yellow on the brush, which uh, will gray it down, but it also warms it up. So be careful. But Three primaries, all cool. Uh, Viridian, cobalt blue, which is a, your cool blue. And uh, glycerin, which is the cool red. And white, which is your coolest color on the palette. And uh, if you want to gray it down, yellow, add yellow lemon, add lemon yellow. I'm going to paint a little bit over my uh, block in here and because these will be, these trees will be much darker than And there is, you, I, in the photograph, I can see uh, a second <clears throat> uh, value in here, a tone that's a little lighter where the uh, cliffs are, but I'm not, I'm not going to uh, mess with that right now.
Um, there's some nice clouds back there. Yeah, there's some really nice clouds. Uh, I'm going to put them in with a pinkish color, the light parts. Uh, if they were closer to the vantage point, they be more yellow, but uh, as, like I said, as uh, objects go back, they, the lights get darker and you can't make yellow much darker. Than just go into a red, it'll turn red as it darkens. Yeah. If you look at your color wheel, uh, your yellows, oranges uh, are the uh, colors with the lightest values. And then the blues and violets are deeper values. And then we'll put a little, little bit of blue sky in there. I'm using a number four brush now. If I had a five, I'd use it, but I don't. Uh, I don't have fives. I just have even numbers. Very little sky in this. Uh, I'm gonna go up over the border a little bit. Um, I'm just painting on a piece of linen that's taped on to this board and it gives me a little more latitude as to where I can crop things uh, if I decide to crop. And then I'll glue it up on a, a piece of gator board after the Paints dry. Sometimes I'll, uh, I, I carry a, just a, some loose canvas or linen in the car. This is linen. And uh, I'll tape it on a board. But it, it's actually more practical to uh, glue it on the board before you go out. Too care too too hard to carry around a wet painting uh, in the car. And, the, uh, I have these panels, uh, they call them panel packs, and uh, if the, the board is cut to a standard dimension, I can just slip them in there and they Uh, 
her, make her carrying wet paintings. Red in there somewhere. Try a little cerulean blue in there. Uh, there's a, a glare over to the right um, where this, the sun is. Uh, position. So the sky would get uh, a little darker over on the left side. And maybe even a little bit of uh, ultramarine in there. I'm not using any medium. I'm just using Gamsol until I get a headache. was using that meg meglip and it started giving me headaches, I think. And uh, I think I'll add just a little lighter. Add some yellow to that sky over there. That's the horizon line. Probably be a little warmer. Horizon line goes behind that point. And, uh, I don't know, these clouds are so insignificant. Uh, it's worth putting in. We'll just rough them in. These are the bottoms of the clouds. Uh, little shadow at the bottom of the clouds, even though they're 
they're all white water vapor. They do have a shape and a mass. Have a shadowed, shadow, sh shaded side and a wet side. Everything is soft edged in the clouds. No hard edges. It's clouds. Fluffy. Fluffy cow clouds. Bottom on them, and then some sky underneath. It's more cerulean blue. It's a little warmer than the cobalt. In the afternoons, I, I always see this uh, kind of pale yellow cel celadon color um, on the horizon. Put that in temporarily, see what uh, comes of it. I'm not wild about uh, just a line of clouds going going across the painting, but uh, we'll see. We can assess that later. And then uh, the water I don't see much uh, delineation between the uh, horizon and the water. Uh, because of the glare of the ocean. Uh, 
and I'll try to uh, indicate the glare from the sun. And it'll carry down into this area here. That may be a little too, too intense. But, uh, for now, we'll just leave it. Let's see what happens. So that's the glare. Dark over there. I feel like I'm getting a little fussy up in the sky, so. Now there is a rock back here that uh, is a nice break in this ocean, all these horizontals going across. And the, um, the surf gets broken. around this rock. I think I need to raise it a little bit. It's too much in the center. Right there. Now the color of the water is, uh, of course, what's being, re the, the color of the water is what's being reflected from the sky. Uh, and kind of a, a paler version of of the sky, uh, but it has a little more green in it. I think water generally has a little bit of uh, gunk in it that uh, makes it green or muddy or So we'll start off uh, maybe with some meridian and uh, cobalt. That's what I 
views up in the sky. And it's a, a flat surface, so it's really, um, really reflecting. What's up with it? Up above it. Go to a little bigger brush here. Viridian and cobalt. Oh, yeah, that's dark. You never know until you put it on the canvas. It always looks uh, completely different. That palette. Oh, I, I kind of like that rock down a little lower. Because it, it's going to uh, attract quite a bit of attention. Maybe the only thing in this big field of water here. I'm going to add just a little viridian to this color to gray it down. It's, it's never going to be as white as the sky, or as light as the sky. Although that sky looks dark. But it's the second generation color. It's a reflection of the ocean. It's not not a direct. Source of light. So it won't have the intensity of the uh, blue in the sky it shouldn't have. Anyway. The photographs, um, they, they tend to not pick up blues very well. Um, I think you're better off relying on your knowledge rather than what the photograph is telling you. This is not a good photograph either. I, I should be using that. It didn't print well. It looks okay on the computer.
if the uh, photograph isn't a real high resolution uh, DPI, if it's not a big file, it uh, doesn't doesn't print uh, very well. It may show up fine on the on the computer, but uh, when you print it, it, it gets there's not enough dots per square inch to uh, get the quality. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Probably, I don't, I'm just guessing. Anyway, the photo didn't print well. And I, that's my theory is it was a, a small, small file with uh, A uh, high resolution for printing. Kind of like that. Um, put a little light behind these trees, and uh, then I, when I paint the trees, um, I can define them more. I'm just poking some holes in the in the mass of trees here. You know, it's been covered up. This is a number Six brush. So when I did the underpainting on. Make the brush over this so just a little so it blends. Doesn't really mix, I'm just getting the paint on the top of the on the mat. Glare would probably obscure everything, the clouds, the horizon. 
we'll see. All right. Um, so let's take that. Uh, that tone for the ocean is uh, working for me anyway. Um, give it a little bit of a this rock and When the water breaks around these uh, rocks, uh, it hit the sort of a light aqua color, uh, not as bright as uh, this stuff down here, but uh, you get a nice aqua color. Uh, I don't I don't know what causes that. I guess it's just uh, the lighter version of the uh, water. That's when it gets churned up it uh, Must uh, reflect. It must just light it seems to be lightening up. Uh, and maybe that's the, the true color of the water is the uh, that green. Aqua color. Which you don't see uh, when it's laying flat. I don't know. Just know what I see. Add a little wave back there. Bottom of that rock where they level. And the water thrown up in the air from the uh, impact would have more yellow in it 
As the, the lights shining through through the uh, water, more bright, and uh, we can add a little bit of a shoreline here. I think I'll do that later. That's crooked. I used to have a real steady hand. Pick up a little paint on the edge of the uh, knife. I should be doing this at the end of the painting uh, rather than fussing with it now, but uh, it's too much fun. Probably torture to watch. Uh, very good crashing wave, but um, we can fix that later. Okay, we'll leave it. We'll leave it there. And come back and do the start doing the the um, cliffs and the rocks. Soften up this, some of these edges. See, now this looks, it looks too dark now. And uh, I'll probably end up lightening up this uh, 
but I'm going to wait until I get these uh, trees in. But the uh, the hill here looks the the this. Uh, land mass, it just looks too dark no. because I surrounded it with light and uh, that's, if you want something darker, you surround it with light. If you want something lighter, you surround it with darks. And uh, in this case, I surrounded it with real bright light and uh, it appears to be darker now. But that's, uh, that's normal. That's a relationships that you have to deal with. Uh, and you need to adjust to those uh, Adjust the painting to those corrections. All right. Um, I have trouble leaving things alone. Okay, we'll leave it there. Um, assess it tomorrow or Monday. Okay, goodbye.